Hey, what's up everyone? I've wanted to know this for the longest time, and I'm just getting to it. What's the difference between these two balls? Obviously, they're both Pro V1s. One is put out as a practice ball, and the other is something that you can buy for $49 a dozen. Both of these Pro V1s are from 2019. After cutting open the practice Pro V1, it looked like a normal golf ball to me. It didn't look like it was flawed or anything like that. I hope the country clubs that use these type of golf balls as range balls don't get too mad at me. Because when I opened up the regular Pro V1, it looked exactly the same. And to be honest, amateur golfers won't know the difference. Ladies, I believe my husband just hit a personal record. He tells me normally it takes three hours to play nine holes of golf, but today it only took an hour and a half whenever I rode with him. Congrats, babe. got the bad cards again pick your poison i want this one yours i have to putt like i'm shooting pool i get a mulligan each shot baby let's go oh my i don't think you need a mulligan on that one it's gonna take a lot to beat that one we'll see what happens oh a stinger i still have a long way to go i don't want to play golf anymore not too bad of a shot let's see if i can get this close hmm. may not need a mulligan again Ended up not being as bad as I thought it was. Oh my. I didn't take a molly because I was worried that I wouldn't get it closer than that. Nice. This is so much harder than I thought it was going to be. Not really. After hole two, I'm still up two. Bailey got one more hole to win. Let's go. Babe, nah, Titleist 915D driver with the head cover on it, and I'm about to play a par four with it. Spongebob ball for the kids, let's get it. But the toughest part about this one is the head cover just wants to fly off every time you swing it. So I made this little makeshift tourniquet here out of a mask. Uh, it hasn't been flying off, but I can't really swing it that hard. So finally made it to the green, and I think I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm actually gonna putt with my putter, but keep the head cover on that one as well. Let's see if we can two putt this. Oh boy, oh boy, is it a pleasure to be at Pinders in Frankston, Texas. Here we have a 600 yard part five. Come with me as I show you how I hit it. Looking like the hole curves a little bit left here. I'm gonna play my famous draw. Course Damn. record! Wow. Whoa! Drive, Chesley. And did I get a hold of that one? Almost a 600 yard drive, would you believe it? Well, my old man taught me I had a flop shot, so. Let's give it all we got. Oh, get in the hole. Get in the hole, Chesley. Get in the hole. Man, did that almost go in. Well, I like to play golf by integrity, by never lying about my shots. So I'm going to finish this out. And to be safe, I'm leaving the flag stick in. Yo, bro, what'd you get? I get, get a par.
You say shank in Spanish. Yeah, it's like I gotta have all my lip stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can't be like put not put together out there. <laughs> Remind me your name again. Uh, Karen. Why do they have you mic'd up? Because I'm his mom. I thought maybe you were like famous or something. Well, I am actually famous mom. Get a piece of skin. Right there, yeah. We didn't start off so great. It's okay. Oh. He's like, get that cover on that putter. I could see him looking at his putter like, okay, why isn't the cover on it yet, lady? <laughs> uh, good job, good work. The first time I had truly felt different in the game of golf. From Cypress, California, amateur Tiger Woods. I teed the ball up, no problem at all. I took the club back and it got heavy. And the more I took it back, it got heavier and heavier and heavier. To the point where I got to the top and I didn't know what to do. It just seemed like an eternity to get there. And when I got there, I don't know what to do. And I, I turned, I came down, and I, I don't remember feeling where the club head was. I don't remember feeling the impact of it. I just remember seeing the golf ball go out there and have a nice little tight draw and it was right down the middle of the fairway. I was like, what the hell just happened? Michael Jordan was banned from a golf course for a dress code violation. Unless you're the most casual of Michael Jordan fans, you're aware of his love for golf. He picked the game up in college and now plays any chance he gets. He's even opened his own course in Florida. One of the perks of being an A-list celebrity is you can play golf at any course you want, whenever you want, wearing anything you want. But this wasn't the case at Lagoras Golf Club in Miami. It's one of the swankiest clubs in the country, and one morning, MJ strolled in the clubhouse ready to play, but there was one minor problem. He was wearing cargo shorts. Now at your local public track, this isn't even close to a problem, but Lagoras has a strict dress code that prohibits cargo shorts. Several members complained about MJ's attire, prompting employees to confront him on the 11th hole. When told he had to change, Jordan refused, claiming he'd played the course a number of times with no issues, and he was nearly finished anyway. Michael's refusal led to a ban and when asked about it, he laughed it off. I'm sure most courses would gladly let MJ wear a Big Bird costume if that's what he wanted to wear, but I have to give props to the owner of Lagors because he's one of the few men ever to stand up to the GOAT. And that's why... ...where your friends can't see you. You're in a deep enough bunker where they can't see what you're doing. So you get yourself set. You need to have an extra ball. You're going to put this ball in your right hand. You set yourself and say, I'm coming up. Here I go. And then you swing, splash the sand, toss the ball. They're going to be saying, nice shot. Now you've got to get your ball. And that's why we put the rake beside the ball. So as I reach down to grab the rake, I grab my other ball. She said, you're a player, aren't you? And I bet you got hoes I said You don't know me like that I just go with the flow The secret hack on how to stop your slice forever A golfer that usually slices a ball with a similar swing like this The ball starts fairly straight but ends up far right Try this Stand backwards so your back is facing the target And simply hit the ball Watch how straight the ball goes It will either go straight down the middle or straight right But why? How does that make any sense? If you don't believe me, try it out. Having your back towards the target makes you swing around the body, eliminating that out to in swing. Your body is clever. It will adapt to the body position. A slicer would usually stand like this, where they open up their body and aim far left, because they know what's about to happen. This only promotes a slice even more. Try this, stand slightly right off your target and drop that back foot just a little bit and practice shallowing your swing. Feel like you are leaving the club behind you on your downswing. This will help the feeling of shallowing the swing. Now, hit some balls and tell me you're not impressed. Like for part three. What's up boys? On a par four. Gonna smack this drive. Gotta get my practice swing in. 
Oh my. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm <laughs> driving. <laughs> I don't know. That was gross. <laughs> Golf in green wall. He's coming backwards. Careful. Watch out. We might lose him. Oh, 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 holy smoke. Can you believe that? He <laughs> nearly fell in Lake Michigan. <laughs> That's what you call a follow through. <laughs>